the priestly system. <laughs> so the ordinary person, you know, if you are a lawyer and someone has a case, you deal with the case for the person. If you are a doctor and there is someone who is sick, you the physician handle the sick person. If you are a clergy and someone wants to meet God, you are the person who has to take the person to God. The ordinary person couldn't pray to God and relate to God. There was that division, clergy and elite. Praise God. Are you following me? Then, the devil now began to attack the person of Christ, who Christ was. A lot of heresies came to the church around that time. Around AD 325, there was a guy by name Arius. He was an elder of the church in Alexandria, in Egypt. But that guy was great in doctrine, yet he missed it. And he began to publish in the whole world an error concerning who Christ is. He began to say that Jesus Christ is fully man, but not fully God. Jesus Christ was not fully God, but he was 100% man, but not 100% God. And he said, in the beginning was the word. That word logos also means an idea. So in the beginning was an idea. <laughs> and he began to distort some scriptures. For instance, <laughs> Revelation 3.14. To the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say it the Amen. <laughs> the true and the faithful witness. The beginning of the creation of God. So they said Jesus is the beginning of the creation of God. So they said that Jesus was the first person God created. And in Colossians 1 verse 15, the Bible says that who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. <laughs> you see what the Bible said? The firstborn of every creature. With that revelation, you may say, okay. Ah. So Arius wrote that Christ <laughs> pre-existed before Adam. Uh, sorry, Christ uh, pre-existed before Adam. Yet, in his pre-existence, he was the first of beings to be created by God. And that is the concept the Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses still uphold. That is the seed of Jehovah Witnesses. That is what Charles Taz Russell upheld. And that is the doctrine he's propagated. They believe that Jesus is even angel Michael. Because the word Michael is Michael, which means the man of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of this great, great, great error that crept into the church, Constantine called forth for the church council. Now, there's something in church history you must never forget. We call it church councils. There were five major church councils. Five major church councils that were set up to handle matters of doctrine. The first church council was called the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea. Because of the heresies of Arius, his, his heresy or his doctrine was called Arianism. Arianism. Arius, A R I U S, Arianism. But God raised one man who was so strong to stand against that doctrine. He raised a man to actually defend the Godhead and the Trinity. And his name was Athanasius. Athanasius. Which the Greek word immortality is the word Athanasian. That's the Greek word for immortality. So that's the meaning of, meaning of his name. He was a mighty teacher in his day. And then, Constantine called for about 300 bishops in Nicaea to look into this matter of, the, of Christology, the nature of Christ. Was Christ fully God or not? Then God raised this man. In every generation, God raises a man. I pray that God will raise you in our generation. And publicly defended Christ, who he was. Because imagine if that her heresy had crept down. Look at Jehovah's Witnesses. Even when Athena, Athanasius prevailed over the doctrine, of, uh, the doctrine of Arius, yet we still see the impact <laughs> of his doctrine, even in our age. 
such that Jehovah's Witness is <laughs> under every nation. It's in every nation under heaven. But Athanasius opened the Bible and began to defend. Arius said that, actually, when Arius stood up to speak, he said, Jesus became God after his resurrection. But he wasn't God to begin with. He was a creator. But by virtue of his life and living, through death, he ascended into Godhood. <laughs> but he is not co-eternal with the Father. And he didn't co-exist with the Father. <laughs> he pre-existed Adam, yet he was the first to be created among God's creatures. <laughs> and you must know the Bible where to defend this kind of concept. <laughs> We need people like Tertullian in our day. People who are strong in apologetics to, to be able to defend Christ in the face of Islamism. <laughs> so Athanasius also stood up and began defending Christ. And that is where the word Trinity was first publicly used. Though it's not in the Bible, the word Trinity. He said, we worship one God in Trinity. And Trinity in unity. <laughs> Not confounding their persons or dividing their substance. And he said, there is one person of the Father and another person of the Son and another person of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit are one. Glory co equal and majesty co eternal. That's what he said on that day. Then he said, <laughs> There are not three almighties, yet there is, there are only, there is only one almighty. There are not three eternals, there is only one eternal. <laughs> he said, The Father is of none, not made, not created, and not begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not created, not made, but begotten. The Spirit is of the Father and of the Son alone, not created, not made, not begotten, but proceeding. Because when you read the Bible, Jesus would normally see of the Holy Spirit. He proceeded and came forth from the Father. He proceeded and came, and came forth from the Father. And without controversy, great is a mystery of godliness. It takes insight to understand Christology, the hypostatic union of Christ. His divinity and his humanity. <laughs> so he defended Christ and his nature <laughs> so much that he wrote a book titled The Incarnation of Christ. And he earned the title Athanasius Contra Mundum, which means Athanasius against the whole world. How can one man believe that this is the truth and he will defend the whole world? Christ is God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> He didn't care because the influence of the extent of influence of Arius was far wider than him. Yet he stood and stood and stood. And at the council, they excommunicated Arius and nullified his concept and his heresy. And the truth brought up by Athanasius was upheld and it became the standard of orthodoxy throughout the church age. Hallelujah. But after him, another error came, and that brought another church council called the Council of Constantinople. In AD 381, the Council of Constantinople. <laughs> Why Constantinople? Now, the Council of Nicaea is after that, they brought, they put together a creed called the Nicene Creed because it was a council at Nicaea. That's where the Nicene Creed came. And the Athanasian Creed came. That's where the Creed came out of. But after that, there was another heresy in the church. A certain man by name Apollinarius came and said, Jesus is not fully human. <laughs> he believes that Christ is not fully human. <laughs> there's something, there's a problem with his humanity. He's not. How can a man live without sin on earth? No, no, no. He's not properly human. <laughs> and this doctrine, heresy, indoctrination, 
it affected the whole church. So an emperor by name Theodosius, Theodosius, he became an emperor in AD 380. Just the next year, he called for another church council in Constantinople, which was established by Constantine, because Constantine built a city by name Constantinople, which was just like a replica of Rome, because Constantinople was founded upon seven hills, as Rome is. And um, over there, the humanity of Christ, about a lot of bishops came together, and they sat down to address the fact that Christ was fully human. <laughs> so they dealt with that issue. After a while, another issue came up. That brought another church council called the Council of Ephesus in AD 431. In AD 431, the Council of Ephesus. That council addressed Christ's divinity. They said, how come they didn't understand how the humanity and the divinity of Christ could both merge into one? There was a man by the name Nestorius. Nestorius proclaimed in those days that the humanity of Christ was fully absorbed by his divinity. So much that his humanity didn't exist. <laughs> so at the council of Ephesus, another error came up in that council. The one who stood against Nestorius was Bishop Leo. Bishop Leo was the first pope in, in the church history. He was the first pope from the word papas, which means great father. <laughs> where we have the word papacy <laughs> so bishop leo of rome stood against nestorius but there's a problem at that place they venerated mary mary was venerated and one member one person was added to the trinity so they had quaternity in place of trinity <laughs> so mary was established in doctrine as the mother of God. So in the council of Ephesus in AD 431, Mary was established in doctrine as the mother of God. And Nestorius, not when I go with Nestorius, Nestorius stood and fought against it. <laughs> but he didn't prevail. <laughs> he didn't prevail. He didn't prevail. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was another church council. And that church council was a very unique council. It was called the Council of Carthage. Council of Carthage, AD 497. Council of Carthage. The Council of Carthage was a church council that brought together the Bible. The Bible. You know, until this, this year, 4 AD 497, <laughs> there was no physical Bible. All those who had come before us couldn't have the Bible as we have it. <laughs> they were all in manuscript that were handwritten. The Bible is perfect and faultless. But you should understand that it, it was human beings that wrote down. That's why we call it manuscripts. That hand copied the Bible. That's why you could have little, little errors in the, some of the exclamations and the punctuations. <laughs> but the Bible itself is correct. As at the time of this church council, the Council of Carthage in AD 497, you know, the book of Revelation had not been added to the Bible. The book of Jude had not been added to the Bible. The book of 3 John, 2 John, 2 Peter, and James were not added to the Bible. The church fathers sat down and they wanted proofs. You know, 
of authentic authenticity they wanted to make sure that the books that because there were a lot of books in those days like the didiki the didiki were principles that were written by the post apostolic fathers we have the shepherd of Hemas, the epistle of Barnabas. there were a lot of books in those days we had the book of enoch so which of these one which of these books must be canonized as scripture so they patiently waited until finally at the at the, at the council of Carthage, they came to a conclusion <laughs> and they used certain principles to identify whether <laughs> those writings were actually inspired and they came out with all the books of the new testament but 30 years just 30 years before this ad 397 athanasius the same guy contramundum <laughs> He sat down and by revelation, he wrote down all the books of the, new, of, the, of, the, of the New Testament. And he said, that was the books that are inspired to be scripture. But they didn't, be, they, didn't, they didn't believe him. But at this council, when the council was concluded, then he realized that Athanasius was right. <laughs> Hallelujah. One problem that brought the church down was what is was called the ancient Babylonian cult. There was a cult that was established by Nimrod, who was called Horus. If you go back to Genesis chapter 10, you will find a man who was a mighty hunter in the earth. His name was Nimrod. Now, all the controversies and all the huh, principles of worldliness and of satanism was laid down by Nimrod. There was a certain cult called the ancient Babylonian cult that was established by Nimrod in his day. And that allowed the veneration and the worship of the, emperor, the empress. Nimrod himself was worshipped. There was the... <laughs> There was a father, the incarnate woman. You know, Nimrod married his mother. His mother's name was Semisramis, who was called the incarnate female. The incarnate female. So Nimrod, <laughs> with the incarnate female, and with their son Horus, from the Trinity. <laughs> the Trinity, you know. And Nimrod and Semisramis, male and female, Isis and Osiris. They are the deity of the Egyptian worship. You know. So, they passed, they established a certain cult. And the cult was taken over by the king Attila in Pergamos. Pergamos became the center of demonic worship. That is why even in the book of Revelation chapter 2, I know where that dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. I know, I know thy works. Is it where thou dwellest? Even where Satan's seat is. That's the church in Pergamos. Pergamos became the center of Satan's throne. The word seat there is the word throne in the Greek. Then, in 6, in, in 6 3 BC, Julius Caesar inherited <laughs> this title. He became the president of the ancient Babylonian cult, Julius Caesar. And he was worshipped. So later on, the Caesars, who, who had dead the Roman empires, they were all the, the given this title. Previously, the chief priest of Rome had a title. The title is where the leader of that cult, the title of that leadership was called Pontifex Maximus, which means the chief bridge builder between Satan and men. You are actually Satan's high priest that bridges humanity and Satan. <laughs> Satan's high priest. <laughs> so then, hallelujah. All the Roman emperors were the Pontifex Maximus until it came to a time around AD 378, 376 to 378. There was a certain emperor by name Emperor Gracious. He was so gracious. He was a believer. <laughs> he was a believer and he refused the title. He refused the title. But when he refused the title, the bishop of Rome by name Damasus claimed the title. 
the bishop now it was the the, the emperors it was the emperors had the title but when emperor gracious refused it two years afterward around ad 378 damasus who was the bishop of rome received the title and that was the, that was the beginning of the introduction of idolatry in christianity when he received the title <laughs> and now he introduced the ancient babylonian cult into christianity and they were married to be one So if you read Martin Luther's book, The Babylonian Captivity of the Church, you see where all these things are coming from. <laughs> that was the Babylonian captivity of the church. That is when Semiseramis was now worshipped. That is when vestment was introduced into the church. <laughs> that is when candles were introduced. A lot of things were introduced into the church at that time. Because the Pope had now inherited Nimrod's position. And that was the degradation of the church. It was a very dangerous moment. Occultism came into the church. In the church today, <laughs> there are many societies that are occultic. But that is when it began. That's when it began. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hmm.